Hey class, uh, I'm just going to jump right into our introduction to Revit project here, starting with a um, an introduction to the Revit interface. Um, let me reset this real quick so that looks like what yours may look like. Um, every time we start Revit uh, and we don't have a project that we're starting yet, we are always going to start with um, a project template. So um, the, yours will look different because you'll have the sort of the start menu, um, but we always choose the architectural template um, for architecture projects. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and open one of those so that my screen looks like yours once you open that template. Um, the first thing that we look at is the file menu. Um, this is where we, you know, I just use that to create a new project, open, save, print, that sort of thing. Um, up here is the quick access toolbar. That is basically a shortcut menu with some tools that we use often. I use this little button here and say show below ribbon um, because I like it closer to my screen because I do actually use this this um, and these buttons here uh, pretty often. You can also customize this and um, uncheck default uh, buttons as well. Um, Revit has a um, ribbon interface much like AutoCAD so this should look familiar. These are the ribbon tabs. We tend to use the architecture and modify at either end most often. Um, so uh, that brings up the architecture tab. We do use some of these others and I'll get to them later. Um, within each ribbon you have panels. So this is the build panel. If I want to build something I go into here. There's circulation, model, room and area. So those are the sub panels and then each of those panels holds um, certain buttons. If a button has a little down arrow it has options beneath and you can sort of set those with those down arrows. Um, the next thing I want to point out is the project browser. Now um, I sh I separate my project browser to the left hand side and my properties to my right hand side um, because I use these all the time. I highly suggest you move your properties bar over to the right side um, because you're just going to be using these all the time. But let's get back to the project browser. This is where um, we navigate through our project and our project has many views. So our floor plans, our elevations, any other views that we create are going to show up here and we use this a lot. Um, we also have things like schedules, sheets, families. Uh, I won't get into all of these, but this is how we sort of navigate through our different views. Um, next up is the drawing area. This is where we do all of our work. Um, as you open up different views, you will get multiple tabs up at the top here of all your different views. And you just switch views by hitting tab. There's other ways to switch views, but I'll get into that later. Um, in your view, um, you now you zoom in and out uh, just like AutoCAD with your scroll wheel. You pan by pressing your scroll wheel down and dragging. Um, that's pretty much the same as AutoCAD. Um, the only other thing I'm going to mention right now is you'll see these four icons in the level one view, which is the default view for um, the architectural template. Um, just make sure that when you start drawing that you are drawing uh, between these three views and I'll get to that uh, later as well. Um, the next thing that we have is below the drawing area is the view control bar and this is where we uh, can change how our view looks, uh, what scale it's at, whether we have coarse, medium, or fine detail, um, if it's wireframe, hidden line, uh, you know, realistic different ways of uh, rendering our, our drawing um, and a few other options which I'll show later. Um, down here we have the um, at the bottom we have the status bar that goes all the way across the bottom. Um, this is basically where Revit will tell you what it's expecting you know right now it's saying click to select because um, I'm not in any command. Um, it also gives this you don't have to know anything about this. We won't get into this part. Um, there's a couple tools over here that we may get into, like filter um, and a, a couple different ways that uh, changes your selection. Um, I'm not going to get into this too much right now. The next uh, area of our um, interface over here is probably the one that we're going to be using the most, which is the properties um, palette. Um, and the properties palette has a few different subparts. Uh, the top part here is called the type selector. 
Um, and I'll get further into this in more detail later um, when we actually start drawing things. But just keep in mind that this is where we select the different types of uh, families. Um, and then below that, um, we have uh, the actual properties um, of our type. Um, so we have the uh, properties filter here. Um, and uh, our edit type button, which we will use uh, quite often when we don't have the right type. And again, I'll explain these in further detail later. Um, when you don't have anything selected and you're simply in a view, your properties palette shows the properties of um, the view itself. So right now you're seeing all the view properties, like the scale is one eighth of an inch, um, what the underlay is. Right now we don't have any underlay, um, what the extents are that sort of thing. So that's that's basically the entire uh, Revit interface. Actually, I did forget one um, piece of the Revit interface that really only comes up after you uh, start creating something. Um, so I'm just going to click up on wall here and uh, a couple extra things that happen when you are creating an, a building element. And that is that a lot of times you will find that you get um, the this piece of the ribbon, which is um, a dynamic um, ribbon, um, or I should say it, it's a contextual ribbon tab in that it changes depending upon what tool you're in. And right now I'm in the wall tool. So generally when you're in a tool that uh, lets you model something, you will see um, these sort of drawing tools, line, rectangle, you know, how are you actually going to create the wall? Um, in addition to that, when you are in some kind of command, you typically get this bar here, which is called the options bar. And you can see by their green tint that these are contextual. They change. They're not always the same. It depends upon what tool you are in. Um, so let me escape out of that for a second. Um, and now we're going to start to actually draw, or what I say, what I like to say in Revit is model something. And we are going to start by modeling the walls of our simple residence. Um, and before we actually get into that, uh, I'm gonna when I go through the method of creating the walls, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna kind of repeat constantly this method because it's it's a pattern of creation that I use over and over again and everything that we do in the Revit kind of follows this this method or this pattern. The first part of that pattern is recognizing what you want to create um, and for this to get started we're going to start with the walls. Um, so the first part of that pattern is, is realizing what you want to create and knowing what category that is in. And when I say category, I mean, is it uh, a wall, a door, a window, um, you know, a datum, a grid? Um, is it, you know, a room? Is it a stair? Um, is it a structural element? Um, you know, is it a beam, a column, that kind of thing? Those are what we call categories. Um, right now, my category is wall. I want to draw a wall. So the second part of the pattern is understanding which ribbon, as I just showed, that category is on. And again, architecture, wall, that's where we find the wall category. Um, and then we're going to click the wall button. And as I noted, that brings up our uh, context sensitive um, tab. Um, the next part of that method, once I am inside the command to draw the wall, the next thing I'm going to look at is over here, is I'm going to look at my type selector. Is this type the type of wall that I want to create? And if you click that, you get a list of um, types that are within the architectural template. For this very simple project today, for this week, um, I am going to use just the default that comes up. This is the basic wall, generic 8-inch. That's all it is. It's an 8-inch thick wall. Um, the next part of the um, method is that we are going to check our constraints. That is the next section of the properties palette. And um, the first set of constraint, the, the, the top here, the ones that are actually um, not dimmed are the ones we want to look at. So the location line of the wall 
is currently set as a wall center line. I'm going to be drawing exterior walls, so I want that to change that to finish face exterior. That means when I actually draw these, the line that I'm going to be drawing is the exterior face of the wall. Um, the base constraint is the bottom of the wall. Where is the bottom of the wall going to be constrained to? And right now we want that to be level one. The base offset is how far away is the bottom of the wall from that level. And right now we're going to leave that again at zero. So the bottom of the wall is constrained or attached to level one and it sits at level one. It's not offset from there. Um, the top constraint right now is unconnected. Um, generally, I always want to constrain my wall top and bottom to um, a height, a level. So I'm going to change this to up to level two. Um, it's going to get rid of the height because the height is dictated to where level two is. And right now, I don't care where it is. Um, so now that I've gone through my properties, the next part of my method is to take a look at my options. Now the options bar up here does show some of the things that I just went over here. So there's some um, repetition in what is here and what is here in my properties bar. Um, so you can see that the height of my wall is level two because I changed my top constraint. My location line is finished face exterior because I did that over here. Now there's some extra options here like chain. That means as soon as I finish drawing one segment of wall, it's just going to continue the command and I'm going to draw another segment of wall. Offset is basically do I want the wall to be on the line that I'm drawing or offset from that line. Um, and that's basically what I'm, I'm going to leave these all default right now. Now I could come in here now the next part of the, the method or the pattern, if you will, um, is to come up to your context sensitive menu and look at your the ways that you can draw the wall. So I can draw it with line segments, I could draw it with a rectangle, I could draw circular walls, um, all sorts of options. Um, for this building, um, we're drawing a 16 foot by 24 foot building, or maybe I should say 24 by 16 because those are the um, the dimensions, I'm actually going to stick with the line tool. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and I'm going to click once and you'll notice that um, just like AutoCAD and SketchUp, Revit has some inferences and snaps. It automatically kind of guesses where you want to draw. It will snap to horizontal and vertical um, axes. So I'm going to draw uh, over um, from left to right and I'm going to snap that way uh, horizontally and I'm going to type 24 feet enter and I know that that has drawn a 24 foot long wall. Now I am going to draw downwards 16 feet and now I can draw horizontally. I don't have to put in a dimension though because as soon as I get right here Revit picks up that inference and it understands that that wall should also be 24 feet and now I just come back to my beginning. Now it doesn't matter if I click this corner, the middle, or this corner. Revit automatically, um, now I'm hitting escape, Revit automatically cleans up my wall joints. And now I have drawn my four walls. It's that simple. After I draw something, I always want to check a third dimension. So I'm going to come up here and what I mean is I'm going to look at it in a different view. I'm going to come up here to the default 3D view, which is the one that I, I typically use to check that I've drawn things properly. I'm going to click that and you'll see that not only have I drawn a two-dimensional plan of walls, I've drawn the three-dimensional wall because I've defined its height here. I've defined its constraints and its properties. Um, and so, and that basically concludes uh, the entire um, method to creating anything in Revit. And we're just going to do that pattern, that method, um, from uh, category, tab, button, um, type selector, properties, drawing, um, and then creating um, from here on out. So the next video will pick up where this one left off um, in creating uh, some more elements of our building.